Welcome to the um, July meeting, July 18th meeting of Metro North Federal Community Council. Um, we have Rich Cataccio on the line. Uh, Francina is unavailable, and uh, Francis, we're hoping, will call in very shortly. So we need to get an approval of the agenda for today's meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum. We do, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll second it. Rich, you okay? Rich? I'm good. Okay. I'm and, good. and we can approve the minutes at the same time? Okay. Uh, my report you have yes. with you. Okay, so my report. All right, so we're, we're not be, of course, for several years. We've not met in August, and we will continue to not meet in August, and the next meeting is September 5th, PCAC. And um, we had the, the May Metro North uh, Committee meeting, presentation and update of the Way Ahead program of Metro North. And so, uh, and one of the things that was finally um, released to the public was their My Metro North, which um, allows you to track the trains. I tried it this morning, but I, by the time I started doing it, the train was coming in, so um, I'll, I'll do it on the way home. Um, I did mail, I did email the link. It's a website there, so if you were interested to get it mm -hmm. um, out, to the, out to the group, we, we would have it. It's interesting that it is still slightly different than the yeah. Long Island Railroad. Yeah, I used the Long Island Railroad one when I was out there with a bunch of friends on Monday and it seemed to work well. Um, okay, so we have a response about the about the uh, Long Island Railroad's uh, care program, and it came from uh, Tom Mitchell, who is in charge of the stations for Metro North, and he he, he writes that um, says I see that one of the agenda items calls for applying the Long Island Railroad cares program at Metro North. We in fact have a program already in place to assist customers who need help getting on or off trains, and I've included Tom Mitchell. But the fact is that I think I heard about it, mm -hmm. but I don't see it publicized as much as I see it publicized at Penn Station. So when I go back to Grand Central this afternoon, I will mm -hmm. make an attempt to see if I can find out where it's publicized. And doesn't it say that you have to call 15 to 20 minutes in the Yes, day? it does say yeah. that. But well, what does the Long Island Railroad require? I don't know that it does. You can just push the button right yeah. there. The button is there? Yeah, on some, not all, sta not all stations. Oh, right. Oh, that's a help right, point. Right, 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 right. No, so, right. So there is, uh, there's a, um, I don't know what it is at the individual stations. You also have to call ahead. You do? Yeah. At, for LAR care, yeah, you do. But not at Penn Station. No. Probably not at Penn Station. Hopefully right. not at Penn Station. Right. So we'll have an offline conversation yes. with them if it's something they include in their mile posts that people would know that. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, so several months ago, um, at a Metro North Long Island Railroad Committee meeting, uh, one of the members, in fact, it was uh, Metro North Railroad Commuter Council alumnus Neil Zuckerman, who asked if there was a possibility that the, the, the uh, committee could go to Pittsburgh to see what's going on with the PTC project there. And um, July 1st was the date that was selected, and so Rhonda Herman, alumnus of our council, myself, and um, Neil flew with Kathy Rinaldi and several senior staff of Long Island Railroad and President Ang. Uh, we were a group of 10, and we went to Pittsburgh, and we waited there for a while, and then another contingent came from, Pitts from uh, Philadelphia, including the Bombardier President Lee Sander, also an alumnus of the MTA, and they put us in a nice van and took us to the Siemens, uh, the Bombardier plant first, and there was a presentation, and uh, it was cut short by Neil, who said, we know what PTC is, we have some very specific questions that we want answered, and so they started to answer his questions, and there were, so there were 10 of us and probably 20 of them, and answered the questions, and um, then we went out into the into the 
onto the floor. We, they show us a demonstration of how it works. And then we have lunch, and then any more questions, we ask them, put us back on the van, and the whole group went over to uh, Siemens. And so there was, um, again, no introduction of what was going on there. And we got to see those under, under car antennas, which I sent the pictures out mm -hmm. out to here. And they explained how, the, how, it, how they're fixing them and how they're repairing them producing them and that they have a better quality control process now and you know, they, we came away with assurances that they were going to in fact to meet, meet the deadline. And you're confident that they're... Yeah, I, 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 we have no choice. <laughs> I mean, you wrote an article which you may have seen um, that appeared in the local newspaper about the visit about his commitment to... I didn't see it. He said he was sending it. It was similar to what he sent to us. Oh, it was in, the, it was, I, I just saw it in the clips. It was, um, I can send that around. But we're all going to keep on top of it. It's critical. Mm -hmm. It is. And um, stepping off of here, Warren and I attended the Jersey Transit Board meeting yesterday. Um, one of one of the uh, people who works for our state senator, David Carlucci, called me about another matter. And in the course of the discussion, mentioned that they've been receiving a lot of complaints about the poor service on the Pascack Valley, mm -hmm. and also on the Port Jervis line. And I said, well, speak with the senator. You can come with us on Wednesday morning. This is where the train we're taking, blah, 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 blah. And so um, he came. He came with us. He came with the us senator. on the train. No, no, the, the, no, the, the, staff. the staff guy, Brendan Cahill. And so he got to experience, I told him he got to experience riding on the train <laughs> and then later riding home on a bus, something that very few people in Rockland County do. Right. But you can understand now what people, and he said yes. So um, it turned out to be, um, the structure was like the meeting, but it was because yesterday coincided with the 40th anniversary of NJ Transit's founding. They did a couple of different things, but um, they would, I explained that I had to leave early because of a funeral, and they accommodated our request. They, they called us, the three of us, to come up and speak in one time. Okay. And then we were first registered anyway, and he would have been first because he was representing an elected official. Right. Even though it was from the state of New York, they, they gave us a courtesy. And as soon as Zorn had finished, we were out of the way. We got our train back to Newark. Got on a bus back home, and I, everything worked out for me. It was fine. I couldn't have asked for it to work any better way. But some of my uh, remarks were uh, captured on the NJM News, which I sent to you all, and Sheila said she posted it, which I did see. And I, uh, you know, talked about how important getting that PTC project is, and how open we were about our problems mm -hmm. with it. And we've heard absolutely nothing from NJT, except that they made last year the deadline. That was it. They made, they qualified for the extension of two years. Right. But there were uh, no details. There's nothing, there are no service notices. So I didn't mention that, but there's no service notices that they're doing this testing on. on and, and, you know, it's scary that they may not make the deadline. Did they say anything after that? They yeah. never comment on anything. <laughs> They don't. They're very opaque, and that's why they don't right. ever come right. out of concern of mine. Yeah. And maybe at the advocates meeting, that's... Well, it's, 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 it's none it's, of us are going. Okay. That was the... That was the um, why? It wasn't... It's not structured the way they would like to see it done. And, you know, I'm, I look at it as being an outsider because I'm not a New Jersey resident. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm honored that they consider me to be a participant there. But I'm going to, you know, let the people who are head of those organizations, that represent a lot more canoes than I do, make a decision. And if they say that we shouldn't go until certain things are met. And, and what they would like to have is the format like we had before, mm -hmm. where department heads came and met with us. That we weren't meeting with one guy that has no authority to do anything. Isn't that, but don't you change things at the table from the table in, in some instances? So we're not on. If you're not on the menu, you're you're the dinner. That's what he said. That's what um, one of the advocates said. If you're not on the menu, you're you're the, you're the dinner. So I'm gonna listen to what they say because these these guys have been 
I think it's a lot longer than me. Do you think it makes sense for, say, me to reach out to Stuart, who's the advocate there, and just, you know, tell him I'd like to get to know him and see the kind of work they're doing? You're, you absolutely could. Okay. Does that, does that make problem. sense? Do you have no objection? Yeah, unlike okay. LARCC, I have no problem with you reaching out to him. Okay. Then I, then I will do that right. and see if we can. Um, get together and sort of talk yeah, just about. Yeah, just until I, I'm I'm out of this. Just nope, me. just yeah. me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, internal advocacy organization, organization that's to right. internal it's, advocacy that's organization. That's right. Yeah, you're a government. Both of you are government workers. Right? Yeah. Okay, so um, that takes care of that. Um, okay, follow up on on. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so the membership update. I heard, I reached out. Again. Again. My monthly um, outreach to the governor's account, uh, governor's uh, appointments office. And there was no change from last month. So I've asked how we can facilitate the process, speed the process. I will reach out to um, County Executive Latimer's office to see um, if they can do anything to step in. I mean, names have been submitted. Yep, it, take, it takes way too long. Not only for our people, but for the other councils as well. Mm -hmm. Well, just for TRC. Oh. Yes. Um, but I will, but the, but the majority of them, of the outstanding appointments are here. Um, there is one who's been non-responsive from Putnam County. Oh, Putnam? Um, Maybe we shot the deal. That's, that, that may be the next best step. Yeah. Because he's been on the board now since 2016. Mm -hmm. This is over three years. Wow. Right. Okay. Uh, I'll put something together maybe that you can send to Neil. Okay. Okay. Should see him on Monday. But yeah, we could get work on this as soon as possible. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll send Emily at um, County Executive Letterman's office. And the reason I'm saying count, uh, Emily from that office is because... Do we know her? <laughs> well, not just do we know her, but she used to work in that office. So she might know how to grease some rules. Um, and then we will uh, get things... Actually, uh, Orrin sent the... Uh, um, and I also got it from David Carlucci's office. Invitation to speak at a fair increase. Uh, what is it? The toll thing at the uh, yeah, tap the bridge. They're having the, the uh, toll uh, for the tap Enzi bridge. Have they decided what the toll? No, no. There's supposed to be an open, a meeting about it tonight, and Joe McDonald's one of the people that's involved in that. Yes, right. I saw that she was on the committee, mm -hmm. right. which is good because she brokered the committee basically. Before I go any further, I wanted to also to thank the council for your support. And um, June twentieth, I was um, happy to get an email, with subsequently a letter, uh, announcing that I had been confirmed for six years. So I'm good till January first of twenty twenty five. Angel as well. So we are the two board members with the longest proposed tenure of anyone mm -hmm. there. That's because under the. Um the new legislation, the uh, members appointed outside of our structure and, and labor are um, coterminous with their appointing electeds. Plus six months. Is it plus six well, months? if they stay on until somebody else is appointed. And the, uh, it should be known that the labor people just haven't bothered to ask for a re Their terms are, are well, well, well passed over too, but it's just not an important thing for them to, to want to do. Uh, I, I just, they just continue to go. And yeah, it's, it's their choice. Yeah, I, I fought, Andrew and I fought differently about it, and so we mm -hmm. took the uh, measures. And that. So I thank you for your confidence and continue Absolutely. hope to continue doing what we do here. I know that um, the Long Island Railroad Council has been uh, interested in pursuing uh, having our members as voting members and has been working with some of the elected officials. That would be great. 
in, um, in the area, uh, and apparently it was part of legislation that was uh, at the Senate level, uh, but never got it. Well, we did talk, I talked about it at, yes. at the White Plains hearing that right. we went to in March. So my receptive is just, there too. It, yeah, so I think there's reception uh, at the uh, legislative level, but not necessarily at the executive branch. I, I, I shared with the um, staff, I had a very nice letter from the senator from the Adirondack, Adirondack region of New York congratulating me and thanking me yes. for my, my um, work here. Okay, so road trip. <laughs> <laughs> a recommend station manager program be listed in Ross stations. So we've had several um, emails from passengers who are at a difficult time finding the name, uh, phone number, and contact of the uh, individuals assigned so to the like. stations. I don't know who's assigned to our station. No idea. So we will uh, reach out to. Uh, Kathy Rinaldi, yeah. or to, to Mark and see okay. the status of that. Yeah, that's the is, so it is uh, in place in all of the New York City transit stations. They've, they've, done, they've implemented a group station manager mm -hmm. system where there's one person who is in charge of a group of stations and then each has, then they have individuals based on Interesting configuration. Seems to be working except that the head of that is leaving or has left. Um, at the Long Island Railroad, I believe I have seen the names and contact information. I'll have to look again. Um, but it sounds as though it should be something that's consistent. Yeah, I, I had a complaint from a customer who lives at Greystone. My contact information provided by Commissioner Brown. And I was in touch with them. There's a ventilation problem at the Greystone Station when you walk overhead. It's very hot. So I call the line superintendent. Oh no, he says uh, that's handled my stations. Okay, <laughs> so he gave me this person to speak to his stations. Well, it's, it's so and so. So I called that person. And um, anyway, he finally, after I emailed him again, he got back to me that they went out there. So he went there. Yes, he said it's very, very hot mm -hmm. when you walk there. Unfortunately, the windows are, are screwed shut because they fell out and didn't proper, make a proper repair. But he's working on them to, you know, to go and fix it. So interestingly, well, I'll, I'll mention it to Mark when I see him on Monday. If uh, I don't hear anything different. All right, well, we'll um, send an email and copy on it. But interestingly, when we get emails at our PCAC Gmail account, of people who want to be in touch with or have a complaint about Metro North mm -hmm. or the railroad or transit, and those that are um, not our regular writers who um, just need to, just uh, an outlet. Um, I've reached out to, on the Long Island Railroad, we copy Hector Garcia, mm -hmm. sure. and he responds. At Metro North, I've reached out and been told to tell the customers to push to go on the website and push the contact us button and send an email directly instead of being able to supply a point of contact there. So it is a very different. Um, no, they need, we need to do the same thing. Yes. Yeah, so Not saying that theirs is the right way. I prefer their, <clears throat> that there's a person yep. that handles it. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Um, and I think, though, that having the Station manager naming contact will be helpful. If, and so the transit authority is already doing it, mm -hmm. and the one on railroad is already doing it, they have to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of the other <coughs> <answers. coughs> mm -hmm. I mean, David Carlucci's office called me about putting a bench in the Floodsburg yeah, station. I heard also. Mm -hmm. He's in touch with Mark Maddox already. So yeah. I put, I'd say tell him Mark Maddox. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I can tell him. <coughs> Okay. I'll meet the council events. All right. What's what we're gonna do about that? <laughs> All right. So meet the council events. Does it make sense to bring the new members out, or do we have a critical mass of people who are available to do that? How would you like to proceed? We'll bring what new members out? The ones that are gonna get appointed. Well, if, if 
they're willing. I mean, I, I came to meetings before I was officially right. on it. I've asked Walter to come, but there always seems to be some kind of a reason why he can't be here. Right. Maybe he could call in. It, I mean, <laughs> is there going to be a reason for him to not be here when he's appointed? That's a good question. I can't answer that. Mm -hmm. um, So I know that the, the, the Meet the Council meetings came up in several contexts. One was the, you know, the need to be out there and to, and to, you know, yeah, be that, that, representative. Yeah, I was at that Shelly Mayer meeting where he said, okay. um, And the other um, was to you know, get people interested in working it, but also to hold um, these meetings in different locations that could double as a Meet the Council meeting. So mm -hmm. um, do you want to have on-site meetings at any stations. I think that it would be helpful to have uh, Francis and Francine as well as Rich weigh in on yeah. um, you know, their home stations and where that would be. Um, if, you know, almost, they'd almost be hosting, even though we would take care of all of the logistics and mm -hmm. Well, we will have fixed titles by email since, yeah. since um, we're missing two of them. Um, we do, uh, Richard, you haven't responded yet to the email about the PCAC meetings and the locations and times and dates. Um, that would be great if you, if you could. Yeah, I just had a knee replacement, so okay. I'm in Sarah. I can't walk around too much. Is this the second one or the, still the first one? The second one. It just happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hopefully you can stay in air conditioning for a while. Yeah, I'm going to need it this weekend. Right. Well, good, good luck with that. Um, so we'll send out an email. Okay. Yeah, I can see this not happening before October, November. Wow. We still have time to plan it. Yes. And we're supposed to notify Metro North. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so I update brochures. Bradley is working on updating updates to the Metro North. Okay. So those are the action <coughs> items that came out of the um, last last meeting. Okay. So Bradley is working on updating um, the. Is he around today? He's at the still at the Metro North meeting. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can give us an update about that afterwards. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Do you want to give us an update on on um, board on the board? Well, they, they gave us like a very, very quick one. We could ask any questions we wanted. I mean, it was just, um, <laughs> three non-voting members there. Vinny, <laughs> Norman, and they came late, and myself, that was it. And there were about 18 staff people that wrote. So we go, <clears throat> we're the only ones that asked the questions. Vinny was, you know, concerned about, you know, Mm -hmm. how it affects the training. I also asked about the you know, consolidation of training. I said that, you know, I never took training at the two railroads, so mm -hmm. I don't know what goes on there. But I know that in transit authority training, there was always people who had been there and, and done the, right. the job that we were doing. And I don't know, I don't know what your plans are for, for you know, merging all these, but you really need to have the people who have the experience. Right. I, mean, I don't know how much generalized training there is across the agencies, but um, we talked about that. Um, and you know, we had a budget presentation for that, which is going to be given at the mm -hmm. at the meetings next week. Uh, that the money is, is really a very very dire situation for the MTA. Well, they're talking about three hundred and seventy to five hundred eighty million dollars, I think, in savings as a result of the and consolidations and the yeah and the. Um, and, you know, that helps a lot in the out years. The right. last year that they're budgeting 2022, I think, right. it's almost a billion dollars. We know we're slight, I think the numbers was 11, as the last report was $11 million surplus this year, but then it goes into the red and significantly into mm -hmm. the red in the out years. All of the, the so-called one-shots, that's one of his uh, um, phrases that, that mm -hmm. Bob Frank uses all the time, are done. And you know they have all the savings there, and, you know, and they continue to benefit from that. But it's it's still a very tough, you know, considering even adding you know percentages for two percent packed in for raises and. Um, well, the, and all the contracts are up. So mm -hmm. the benefit that you had that people in yesterday's meeting really didn't have was that the report's now been available for 
almost, for, for 18 hours. So, um, were there any questions that were specific to um, recommendations that were included in the report? We were they concerned become, about where the layoffs would come, if that's right. what it comes to, and um, if the agency had said, you know, they had gone through their list and decided what, um, you know, where, where they could, but there were, of course, no details provided. Mm -hmm. Right. Did they talk about the chief, the chief transformation officer, yeah, or the chief operating yeah, officer? Yeah, there was a question: Who's who that want to take a job like that's going to be obsolete? Right. So one example was mm -hmm. given was Ken Feinberg, who became head of you know, the the nine one one distribution um, uh, fund, uh, distributing the money mm -hmm. for that, and um, we'll see what happens. You know, some of the some of those big jobs could be filled by people that are. Here. Mm -hmm. They talk about the managing director spot slash something else. Right, Chief and Operating Officer. Already, and we have already such a person. Well, what was that? They talked about uh, one of the, the titles is the Chief Transformation Officer, then it's a COO slash um, managing, director. managing Director. And we and the Managing Director now is Ronnie Hakem. So, I mean, I don't know how that right. becomes the same job or is it doesn't. So, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. I mean, they didn't. They were. They, they didn't say you need to do A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. They just said in the report that these are things that that should be considered. But there are six major overarching principles. Some of the concerns that not just that we've raised ourselves, but um, that we've heard are that um, the report seems to lack an understanding of how different functions work within the organization, mm -hmm. you know, for example, capital and operations planning, and how um, everything is interwoven, and splitting them up into distinct silos, where now, especially Metro North, they're, it's an integrated team, um, will take away some of the um, ability to really collaborate. Um, as it's proposed. Can I, did you did, did you send this to the whole PCAC the report? I, I no, I sent it to um, the chairs yesterday, and, but didn't get any feedback, so didn't want to send it out unless. Well, it's on the website. So, right. Well, so, right we'll, so we'll send that. All right. So Rich, we're, yeah, if you don't have it, already have it, um, Deborah will send it to everyone that's in, in all in all account. The whole PCAC will get it. So it's on the website. Okay. Okay. Good. Right. Yeah, it's, it's no longer a secret thing, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's 29 pages or something? It's right, it's 29 pages, and one of those is footnotes, I think. One of them is a disclaimer, yeah. which says that you can't count anything here uh, in the report unless you've been specifically briefed by Alex Partners or the MTA or an agent thereof, which is oh, interesting. It's 37 pages. Oh, right, because the majority mm -hmm. of the world will never get that briefing. That makes no sense. The summary was like 18 pages. So. Right. Yeah, so it's, right. it's a lot of reading. It's like reading the Mueller report. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay. So uh, there's, you know, there's obviously there's a lot of concern within the agencies, agencies mm -hmm. um, about what this means, about whether there will be layoffs, about what the consolidation it was in the newspaper today. Oh, I know it's in the newspaper, but it says that there's going to be a workforce reduction. It doesn't say um, that there are necessarily going to be layoffs, that there are going to be attrition. Um, one of the concerns that we have is that there has not been an analysis of what the hiring freeze and current attrition rates mean to the ability to function or to perform the required functions. Um, and, and so then just continuing down the path without having any of the metrics that are being um, requested by the governor um, is, is challenging. And having metrics is not a bad idea. It's how they're developed, that is part of the detail that's lacking in the overarching report. Mm -hmm. um, so with the, I mean, that's, the fact, I, all, most of the news reports I saw, the TV reports for, oh, the MTA is going to lose, is going to cut loose 2,700 people and save $500 million. That's, oh, that's not, easy which is nothing. <laughs> that is the um, broadest simplification <laughs> of come with anything I've ever heard. Mm. 
Um, and my shouting at the TV has not changed their reporting. <laughs> there is a lot of thoughtful reporting out there, though. So um, city and state has had some good analysis. Um, you know, there are those who say that the governor has now positioned himself perfectly to be the driving force between um, uh, change, behind change, but that his style of change management is basically a stick um, to, to make things fit into the molds that he um, has created. envisioned and created. And he owns it. He does, but he still does not say that. I, I, personally, my concern is, is Andy Byford. Andy Byford is a big concern of many of us. Um, in a good, I think in he's a good, a great in, job. A, in a good way. Right. In a um, good way. The, um, <clears throat> from some of the things we've heard is that he has um, been able to retain signals and some of the other operational aspects related to fast forward, including the buses. Because there was talk, I'm just checking to see if Francis has mm -hmm. been um, in contact, uh, to see if, um, to, so he's able to retain some of the signature um, aspects of fast forward for now. We don't know what the capital plan is going to bring. The capital plan is an interesting animal because it's due, I mean, Pat Boyce said the capital plan will be out in the fall. The 20 year needs assessment will be out in the around in the winter, mm -hmm. which is part of the expression back ass words. Um, the, there is a, a forensic audit underway that will be completed in December that is specifically relates to the capital plan. So that would sort of uh, you know propose that there will be no capital plan until the forensic audit is completed. So, um, another aspect of the Alex Partners report is that there are these timelines mm -hmm. for implementation that we don't have a start date on. That's yes, right, they have a nice uh, graph. They do, have, they've got a lovely graph. Yeah. But the official um, report cannot be, the final report won't be ready mm -hmm. until, until the end of October when the board votes on it again. This, this vote, report. Page, this vote, page 31. On, this vote <coughs> on the Alex report on next Wednesday that, that the board is going to vote on is basically to accept the report and begin um, the process of moving it to the next level. But there will be until the end of October when the board adopts the final plan. So hopefully there will be the opportunity to make some tweaks and revisions based on... Um, it seems like it should happen. Uh, it, it would seem like there mm -hmm. should be. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that there will be. The governor has called on implementing a significant number of recommendations. Yeah, he says, he say that every, in this report that it's front-loaded to get to really right. get... But you, but you can't even start the front until the end of October if you're playing by the actual rules. Okay. So what we... Um,